or a life ministries come out of the world. Messiah people seek the truth. Hello, everybody. This is Paul Neeson with Torah Life Ministries. Thank you for joining the show today. Today, I want to discuss an important message for my the local Christian radio station. This message is addressed to Christians, but it applies to everybody. So uh, sit back, enjoy, and remember, when it's over, put your comments and questions below the video so we can uh, we can discuss them if you'd like. Hello, everybody. This is Paul Neeson with Torah Life Ministries. Thank you for listening to the program today. And for many of you that are listening here on the local Christian radio stations and ask what Torah Life Ministries is about, the Torah is the first five books of the Bible, which is the instructions of the will of our Creator for us. It is one of the greatest gifts he left behind for us to know what to do and how to do it. He didn't just leave us with nothing or no instruction. He gave us an instruction guide on how to live our lives. And that is known as the Torah, which many people that hear that word mistaken it for a Jewish book. It's not a Jewish book, folks. It's a a book of Yahweh. It's a book of our Creator. It's the Bible. And technically, the whole book of the Bible is a book of instructions, but the first five books is where uh, the majority of the instructions on how we are to live our lives is, is, and it's the foundation of all scripture. And if you have a solid foundation, everything that's built upon it is going to be strong as well. But if your foundation is weak, everything that's built upon that is just going to crumble when times get hard. So we need to have a strong uh, relationship and a strong foundation with Yeshua, our Messiah. And Yeshua himself, the one they called Jesus himself, taught about the guidelines and instructions of our Creator known as the Torah. In Timothy, when it says all scripture is profitable for man, we have to understand there was no new renewed covenant or New Testament. He was talking about the Torah, the guidelines and instructions. It's what the prophets read, it's what the disciples read, it's what Yeshua taught. The guidelines and instructions of our Creator, and they have not been done away with like Christianity so claims. I post a lot of videos on my website, uh, TorahLifeMinistries.org, and as I'm posting these on my website, I get many comments. Sometimes there are comments of people whose eyes have been opened to understand that Torah is for all of us today, everybody. There's a mistake out there for that people believe, oh, the Torah or even the Old Testament is only for Jewish people. There's nowhere in the Bible that says that, folks. If you're a Christian and you're listening to this right now, hear that again. There's nowhere in the Bible that says the, the Torah or the Old Testament is only for the Jewish people. And some people will say, but it clearly says in Scripture that uh, the, the Old Testament laws or the guidelines and instructions of our Creator found in the Torah are, are only for Israel. And that is correct. But my question to you is, who is Israel? It is the commonwealth of Israel that you become part of when you accept Yeshua as your Messiah. So you are now Israel. Gentile means heathen. It means non-believer. You cannot be a believing Gentile. That's an oxymoron. So wherever you came from, when you accept Yeshua, you now become part of the commonwealth of Israel. For an example, when the children left uh, Egypt and they took many of the Egyptians with them, those Egyptians now became part of the commonwealth of Israel and they too were required to keep the guidelines and instructions, the same Torah as the children of Israel that they left with. And that's the way it is. If you want to be accepted into a house, if you want to be accepted into a family, if you want to be accepted into an organization, you need to follow the rules. And the organization of our Creator, His rules are the Torah. And because of the grace and mercy of a wonderful Creator, He gives us time to figure it out. But it says clearly in Scripture, if we decide to make a practice of living against those guidelines and instructions, there will be severe consequences. It's our Creator's greatest desire for us to follow His guidelines and instructions. He says in Ezekiel 33.11, I take no pleasure in the death of wicked people. I only want them to change from their wicked ways so they can live. Now a translation of that would be, I take no pleasure when people live against my guidelines and instructions. It puts them in terrible danger. I would love for them to start following my guidelines and instructions so they can have a future and a hope, so they can live, so they can have a life. That's right from Scripture, folks. So I get a lot of comments of people whose eyes have been opened and they, and they could agree with this. But then I get comments from people that, that are stuck in Babylon, as I say. Uh, we have to come out of Babylon. And Babylon is the world system that we're stuck in today. It is a, a physical place in the Scriptures, but... When we look at it, it's a place of non-believers and a thinking of the flesh. 
the thinking of the non-believers today. And that's where many uh, uh, people are stuck in because of deception, because the enemy knows how to how to deceive us, but also because of, of, of habit, because of what they're used to and so on. So I often get a lot of comments on my YouTube page and under my videos and, and just everywhere about me being wrong and about me in, being incorrect about scripture. Folks, this isn't about me. This is about the Bible and it's about what the Bible says. And it's about... Our Creator would never give us something to do and then say, well, I changed my mind, take it away. No, He gave us something to do from the beginning. And He's given us wonderful uh, opportunities to work it out and to figure it out and to get it. And when we're ready, our eyes will be open to this. But that's not an excuse. He never gave Yeshua, our Messiah, to die for us as an excuse to live in sin. And that is the way many people are handling it. They're saying, we don't have to follow the guidelines and instructions anymore. We don't need to do anything because... Yeshua died for us, and, and, and our sins are wiped away. Listen, your past sins have been wiped away. You could start fresh. You were on death row, and you were about to pay the penalty for your, your criminal life. You were about to pay the penalty for your, your unrighteous life. You were about to pay the penalty for crimes that go way beyond what even is mentioned in Torah. But somebody came to set us free because it says in the scriptures that a righteous judge cannot set the innocent free. Somebody had to pay the price for that crime. Somebody had to be on death row for it. And Yeshua came and took our place. But he didn't just take our place. He set us free. And when he set us free, he gave us a book of instructions. And he said, you're free. You're clean. You start all over again. There's no record. I know people that, that, that work years. If you go bankrupt, you know, for seven years, I believe it's on your record. If you have a, a, a certain criminal issues, they're on your record many times for the rest of your life. Not only did Yeshua, the one they called Jesus, set us free, but he said your record is clean. You can start fresh. That's what being born again is all about. So now you're starting fresh. Do you want to go and put all those terrible things back on that record? Or do you want to say, I'm going to live right this time? I'm not going to go back and, and have those things back on my record. I'm not coming back to jail. I'm staying free. I'm going to stay free physically, spiritually, and emotionally. I've been set free. We've been set free from Egypt. When the children were set free to go to the promised land, not to go back to Egypt. And what happened? Many of them, they didn't want to. They, they, were, they, were, they were desiring the flesh pots of Egypt and complaining and moaning and groaning. And they didn't make it into the promised land. Well, we all have an opportunity, folks. You know, we might have been deceived, but through mercy and grace, we have time to figure it out. Do we want to stay set free and make it to the promised land? Or do we want to go back to Babylon? Right now, many of us are, are stuck in the desert, just like the children of Israel were for 40 years. Deciding or trying to figure out those many, many, many amazing things that our Creator showed them. The part into the Red Sea and all the other amazing things that happened in the desert. And still... Still, they could not see. Their eyes were just not opened. There are many of us that are stuck in a desert, and our eyes are not opened either. And when our eyes become opened, we have a choice to, to cross over. That's what it is, crossing over into the promised land. And having a new beginning, a new life, with a, a record that is set free and clear. Or we could desire the life we once lived. And we don't want to change anything. So we desire to go back to Egypt. or we can desire to go back to what we've been taught, to traditions of man, whether it's Christianity or Judaism or some other belief system that's not biblically based. We go back to that and we stick to that because that's what our friends are doing and that's what our families are doing and that's what we're used to. No, we need to seek Yeshua and build that relationship with him. And that's what's waiting for us in that new land. That's what's waiting for us in the promised land. That's what's promised to us, a future and a hope. A future and a hope. It says, I take no pleasure in the death of wicked people, folks. Wickedness is living against the guidelines and instructions. Wickedness is living the way you lived when you were in Egypt. So there's a lot of people out there, understandably so, because of the deception that, that might not agree with the message. So I get uh, comments like the one I'm going to read now, and I'm going to address it here in the scriptures today. And basically, uh, the, the comment that I received was it says you have missed the whole point of what it means to be a Christian. Now when we hear the words a Christian, to be a Christian, 
I love people that love Yeshua. I think it's a wonderful thing that people desire to follow Yeshua. And Yeshua is the name of Jesus. That's his Hebrew name. So it says, you have missed the whole point of be, uh, what it means to be a Christian. I know what it means to be a Christian today. I don't want to be a Christian. When you look at what Christianity is and has done to the gospel today, you should desire to be a follower of Yeshua, the one they call Jesus. And I am telling you now, most Christians do not follow his guidelines and instructions. And you could say that's just a word, that's just a title. And I say, no, that's just a principle. The principle of Christianity today or Judaism today is a man-made system of traditions that often go against what the Bible says. Yeshua said, follow me. Be a follower of the way. When somebody asks me what I am, I tell them I'm, I'm a follower of Yeshua, the one they call Jesus. That's what I am. And that's not Christianity or, or today. And that's not Judaism today. It's none of the above. The scriptures are clear. There's no black and there, there's no gray in the scriptures. It's black and white. It's just our gray thinking. So the comment goes on to read, you have missed the whole point of what it means to be a Christian. And then he goes on to tell me, Reread John 3.16. Read the book of John. It's not that we have loved him. It's because he has loved us. The teachings of Yeshua, and this person said Jesus, was based on two things, love and forgiveness. Well, he goes on to say, if we as Christians don't understand that, then we are missing the whole point of his teachings. Your faith is based on obedience and the law. Nobody, and they put in capital letters, nobody, can follow all the laws to the letter. Don't call yourself a Christian because faith, uh, because faith based on obedience and law is not Christianity. You see, before I continue with this, I'm going to tell you right now, many people have confused the word law and the word Torah. They, they, they put law and, 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 and faith or law and Christianity here together. And that's what Yeshua came to do with. He came away through with the man-made laws. And he told us to be faithful to our creator's guidelines and instructions. That's what he told us. And he would never give us to, to do something that we cannot accomplish. And if we desire to accomplish something and we mess up, we have his grace. But if we make an excuse to say why we can't do something, and we make a practice of living against his guidelines and instructions, there are consequences. So we have to understand that. The fellow goes on to say, the only, way we, uh, the only way we can say we are Christians is to forgive. No. You need to be obedient to the words of our Creator, or at least desire to be obedient to the words of our Creator. You can't continuously forgive other people and forgive yourself for practicing a life living against our Creator's guidelines and instructions when He gave us those instructions to live by. There comes a time where you have to wake up and say, look, I can forgive, but i got to get right with His Word. Because I don't want all these consequences to keep tearing me down. The fellow comes back and says on, in the comment, I pray one day God will turn your life around. Read John 1, 4, and 5. So uh, 1, John 4 and 5, uh, 1 John 1, 4, and 5. It says, uh, <clears throat> Come out of the dark, my friend. Love conquers all. Bitterness, hatred, retribution have no place in Christianity. Well, so that was a comment we got, and I'll go through the scriptures that, 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 that the fellow was referring to. And the first one we could look at today is the book of, uh, of 1 John, and we go to verse 4, and we go down, and 1 John 4 says, And we write these things to you that, you, that your joy may be full, and that this is the message which we have heard from him, and we proclaim to you, Elohim is light, or our creator God is light. And no darkness in him. Uh, there is no darkness in him. None. Okay. So he's light and there's no darkness in him. It goes on to say in verse 6. If we say that we have fellowship with him and we walk in darkness, we lie and are not practicing the truth. So if we say we have fellowship with him and we walk, we walk in darkness. Not about slipping up and making a mistake that he's going to cover us in. But if we make a practice on a regular basis, a living in sin, living against his guidelines and instructions, it says it right here in the scriptures, uh, we are not practicing truth and we are liars. But if we walk in the light, in the light of Yeshua, he gave us the guidelines and instructions as our foundation of Torah, 
of the way to walk and the way to live. And yes, it goes beyond just doing something physically. It goes to an attitude. Yes, forgiveness is part of that attitude. But we have to understand obedience as well. It says in verse 7, But if we walk in the light, and he is the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of his son, Yeshua uh, Messiah, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous that he may forgive us the sins and they may be cleansed from, uh, from us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Get this straight, folks, and understand this, everyone who's listening. We are saved only by the blood of Yeshua Messiah, the one they call Jesus. We cannot keep or do something to be saved. We cannot earn that from our works. We're not saved from works. We're saved by his blood. But we're to do his works, not to be saved, but because we are saved. Because he did die for us. And he told us this is the way to live. And this is what to do. And this is how we are to do it. And that goes right along with the the comment of this light and darkness message we have here. He tells me to read in his comment, 1 John 3, 16, which says, For Yahweh so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that everyone believing into him should not perish but have everlasting life. Well, let's keep reading and see what it says there. It says in verse 17, For Yahweh did not send his son into this world that he might condemn the world, but that the world might have life through him. The, all, uh, the one believing into him is not condemned, but the one not believing in him has already been condemned. For he has not believed into the name of the only begotten Son of Yahweh. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world. And part of that light is the instructions that were left behind, the Torah, the guidelines and instructions we should live by. The light has come into the world. And man loved darkness more than they loved light, for their works were evil. So we have Yeshua the Messiah coming to save us, setting us free from death row, showing us light in the darkness, showing us light at the end of the tunnel. And the light is there. And that light is righteousness. It's a righteous life. But our flesh that was in the darkness preferred the darkness over the light. Preferred to live according to our man-made traditions more than we, we wanted to live according to the ways of our, our, our creator. So now you have uh, mixed up Christianity and Judaism starting to say, you know, that, that, you know, we don't have to do things according to the way the scriptures say. Nowhere in the Bible does it says where, excuse, it says, keep my commandments, keep my statutes throughout all your generations. It says, these are my guidelines and instructions. Do all of them and keep them. Now, do all of them apply to us today? No. We can't do certain sacrifices and, and other temple rituals because there's no temple currently. I'm a man. I can't do commandments and orders and, and guidelines and instructions that we're giving towards women. So, so some of these things, you know, we just can't accomplish. But what about the ones we can accomplish? Are we to lump that in with the rest of them and make an excuse for not doing them? Or are we to say, well, you know, this isn't too difficult to, to do these things. And it's for our own benefit and our own good. So why would we not want to do these things? Because we're looking more to the darkness and the flesh than we are looking more to man. And it comes out to not how uh, everything's going out every single day. It's about what we're practicing. Because practice does make perfect. And you practice at, at, at embracing the light of Yeshua and, and, and following him. Or you make a practice out of living in darkness and enjoying the, the sinful flesh, uh, the desires of the flesh. That's what it comes down to. And practice makes perfect. And if we look at this and we understand that, Yeshua is there for us. If we're practicing to live righteously according to his guidelines and instructions and He we mess up, that's where his grace and his mercy comes in. But if we're practicing at making a, a lifestyle, living against his word, and purposely and willfully living against his guidelines and instructions, now we're making a practice at living in sin. It says in verse uh, in, in in John verse twenty and John three twenty for everyone practicing wickedness hates the light and does not come to the light that his works may not be exposed, but the one doing the truth comes to the light that his works may have been revealed and that they exist having been worked in our wonderful Creator. Do you understand, folks? Yeshua takes away not just our sin but our sinful desires. 
He leaves us the guidelines and instructions of how we are to live our lives and what we are to do as we're living our lives. And that's where the joy comes in that it talked about, about in, 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 in 1 John 4. It says, I write these things to you that your joy may be full. Yeshua died for us, not so we could run around and we could experience the consequences that come along with living in sin. No, that joy would be filled in us. And that comes from Yeshua. That we would have so much joy no matter what's going on in this world. That we would have joy knowing that, that He is our Savior and we don't have to do this alone. We go to 1 John 3, 4 and we look what it says here. 1 John 3, 4 says, Everyone practicing sin also practices lawless, lawlessness. And sin is the breaking of the Torah. Sin is the breaking of the Torah. It goes on to say in verse 5, And you know that He was revealed that He might take away the sins and the sin is not in him. Everyone remaining in him does not practice sin. See, it says sin in your scripture, but that's what they're talking about. They don't make a lifestyle living in sin. They've given that up. The next, it goes on to say, everyone practicing sin has not seen him, not known him. Little children, let no one lead you astray. The one practicing righteousness is righteous. Even that one is righteous. But uh, the one practice in sin is of the devil, because the devil sins from the beginning. For this, the Son of Man, Yahweh, was revealed, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Everyone who has been begotten of Elohim, a wonderful creator Yahweh, does not practice sin, because his seed, ab his seed abides in him. And he is not able to sin, because he has been begotten by a wonderful creator. You see, it comes down to a practice and how we desire to practice his life. And that come, that's where repentance comes in. I and all of us are sinners. There is only one who is perfect, Yeshua Messiah. But how do we respond when we mess up, when we slip up? Are we upset? Are we repentive? Do we have a repentive part where we want to change? Or do we make an excuse and act like it was no big deal because Yeshua covered our sins? That determines everything. Practice makes po perfect, folks. And uh, do we want to be perfect at sin or do we want to be perfect at righteousness? Do we seek to be perfect at righteousness? Do we seek to be perfect in sin? We have this opportunity. So we need to continuously go to him daily and we need to pray. We need to think about uh, what, what, what his word says. And we need to read his word. Because I'll tell you, Yeshua didn't lower the bar. Yeshua raised the bar. Yeshua said, not only is it a sin to commit physical adultery, it's a sin to, to even think about committing adultery. And when we're living a life practice, practicing sin on a physical avenue, that's what's going to happen mentally and emotionally. We're going to be thinking sinful things. But when we physically put into place of us living a righteous life, our mind is going to follow. And we're not going to desire to, to, to live in sin and we're not, not have this struggle to live in sin. It's about separating ourselves from the flesh and the world. That's what it's about. And it comes with the foundation of all scripture of keeping the guidelines and instructions of our creator. All his statutes and commands, not some of them. It says, if you desire, says, when you go into the promised land, do not follow the ways of wickedness. Separate and divide yourself from those things and from those people. And that's what we need to do, folks. We need to separate and divide because that's what Yeshua came to do. He came to separate and divide those that are seeking righteous versus those that are not Yes, he so loved us that he gives us the opportunity to start fresh again, to be free from death row. And even more so, not just free, but free. He didn't leave us empty handed. He left us with his word of what to follow, of how to do it, how to get along, the instructions. He didn't leave us to figure it out. He gave us the instructions says he knows every hair on our head. He knew us before we were born. He formed us in the womb. And he said, look, I know I put a brain in you, and I know you're going to figure it out, but I'm going to help you. I'm going to give you the, the actual words to figure it out. But man-made tradition has just added so many man-made things to it, making it more difficult, making the yoke more harder. When Yeshua says, my yoke is easy, my yoke is not burdensome, it's not difficult. If you love me, you will keep my commands. That wasn't a, a, a plea. That was, that, was a, that was a statement. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. 
And if you love him, your heart and your mind are changed where you desire to learn everything about him and read up on him and follow his words and live the way he says to live. In those times where you're not perfect and you mess up, you are going to be remorseful for us, for it. You're going to have a repentant heart for it. You're not just going to let it slide. That's what it comes down to. It's about being set apart. And yes, there are many people that are deceived that truly do love Yeshua, the one they call Jesus, that are living in sin and making a practice out of it. I believe most of Christianity today, that's what it is. They truly love uh, our Creator, but they just don't know. They don't know. But it says in, in, in James 4.17, to know good and not do it to him it is sin. So now what do you do when you find out the truth? That's your question. Do you go back into Babylon or do you leave Babylon? Do you desire to go into the promised land or go back to the flesh pots of Egypt? That's what you got to decide. And many of us are stuck in a desert. Stuck in a desert for so long because they just don't know. Their heart says one thing, but their actions don't seem to follow. Their lips say one thing and their heart does seem to follow that. And then their actions seem to follow that. We need to know it. We need to have faith. We need to know that regardless of the world says, regardless of what the world promises us, regardless of the world gives us and does and the riches of this world, we have to know that we need to store our treasures up in heaven and we need to follow the words of our creator no matter how much it goes against man's and man's ways. And we need to be righteous in all our desires. When we get up in the morning, we need to spend time with him to thank him for strengthening our heart, for giving us his word, for setting us free from death row and for the blood of Yeshua that set us free. That's what we need to do. And not make excuses to say we don't have to follow the guidelines and instructions, the Torah, often misquoted as the law. No, we need to follow them. We need to follow them because we want our mind to be transformed. And our mind's only going to be transformed when we make a habit of doing something physically. Get in the habit of doing something physically. Your mind will be transformed where you will not be able to go backwards, go forward. There's no neutrality with our creator, folks. You're either going forward or backwards. If you stand still, you're going backwards. It's time we go forward. I have many messages on my website, www.torahlifeministries.org. If you're listening locally in South Florida, we have a fellowship where we meet every Sabbath at 3 p.m. in Lake Worth. You can join us. You can go on the internet and you can find many uh, previous videos and teachings on all of these different topics. If you have questions or comments, you can go there as well and contact, and contact me and I'll do my best to address these. And every Friday night, we have a live fellowship via YouTube at 10 p.m. Eastern Time online as well. You can find that information at the top of my, my, the screen at TorahLifeMinistries.org. I want to wish everybody a wonderful uh, Sabbath, uh, the fourth commandment that we must keep. Have a blessed day and keep reading your scriptures, keep learning, and keep growing. Shalom. All right, everybody, there it was. Thank you for listening to the message. Remember, put your comments or questions below the video. And until then, have a great day and shalom, shalom. Come out of the world, oh my people. Seek the truth, avoid the evil. Learn Yahweh's ways. Torah life ministries, come out of the world. Oh.